I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And I really hope that you have your physical gold and silver already established because inflation, obvious inflation is definitely on its way. And I cannot start this without talking about the ship wedged in the Suez Canal that disrupts trade. And it looks like it will be weeks before they get that out. And what that really means is that there is a blockage in uh, the transport of goods in the busiest port in the world. And so those, all of those goods have to be rerouted. Many of them are just static. And uh, according to a report I was listening to this morning, there are 20,000 of those containers, you know, those big ginormous containers that you see on the back of semis, 20,000 of them are part of the uh, ship that is lodged in the Suez Canal. So be prepared to point for fingers to be pointed to say, well, that's what's causing the inflation. And very well it is. Shipping costs are going up. Oil is going up, which takes us to the next one. We're going into the summer season. Price of gas climbs towards $3 a gallon. Yeah, actually, I think that's what I paid the last time I put gas in my alternative vehicle car, which is part electric and then part gas, because I'm not really confident enough to go all one way yet, but we're working there. So, you know, be prepared because they're saying that this is transitory. So what does that mean? Does that mean the prices go up and then they come back down? Well, I don't know. Think about when, how much you paid for food or, or anything, you know, two years ago, five years ago, 10. No, it goes up. And, and I think that this is going to be a good excuse for those prices to remain up. But of course, don't worry about that because many of you have already gotten or will be getting your new stimulus checks regardless, well, not quite regardless of your income, but even high, higher income earners will now have all that excess money to spend. And it's a good thing because prices are going up, including taxes. Uh, the government is considering tax hikes in the next bill. Democrats are weighing a variety of tax increases, including boosting the corporate tax rate and the top target marginal income tax rate on individuals. Now look, he just passed, we just passed almost a $2 trillion stimulus bill on top of all the other ones that we've passed. And we're going into an infrastructure bill that is going to add roughly another 3 trillion. How are these things going to be paid for? More and more debt. But ultimately it has to be passed on to the taxpayer. And that is part of the inflation too. And that's why I said at the beginning of the show, you better have your gold and your silver. Here, we'll get a little bit more into it. Biden team hones $3 trillion plan to ignite growth, uh, folks sh focus shifts to infrastructure and climate. Look, they've been pulling out this infrastructure card for quite some time. So I'm going to be doing a piece on that in the very near future. So you can see about the promises and how, you know, they would bring it out, but then not really go through with it. And we'll see if this is going to be the same this time. My guess is no. My guess is they will finally start to fix the roads and the bridges and the water systems and all of the, and the uh, energy grid, you know, will all of this happen fast enough, especially in the energy grid to prevent rolling blackouts and different things that could happen? Maybe not, but we're going to talk more about infrastructure spending in the future. Just know that it's coming and that is definitely going to add to inflation. What else will add to inflation? So I guess this is all about inflation today, pretty much. But dealerships run low on inventory as chip crisis curbs auto output. So you're looking at prices on automobiles, which frankly, in my opinion, are sky high anyway. We, I did a thing uh, 
you know, maybe, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, Edgar, something like that, showing how much more the cost of raw materials were to produce cars today than they were a year ago. Well, you know, they're saying that all of this money printing is not causing inflation, but of course we know that is a lie. And how many times can you be lied to if you do not know the truth? It is imperative and critical, in my opinion, that you do your due diligence and you pay attention because you are not going to be told the truth. The truth will be hidden. And we were warned when they went to an average uh, inflation target that inflation was coming and they knew that they were, that they were going to, I don't know that I'm going to say allow it to run hot or more that it's going to get away from them. And so when they sit back and they're all calm and not worried about inflation, not worried about this, it's transitory, right? And we still have 11 cent a loaf bread, don't we? No, it's not transitory. The rate and speed of the inflation was the real trick that the central bankers utilized and why they've managed to, for this fiat money system to last as long as it has, but it has run its course. And you guys know we have to shift into a new system. Now, hopefully it's one that is a lot more fair, but that's only going to be true if we pay attention so that we can hold the government and the central bankers toes to the fire. And we get maybe others in there that are more attuned to a more fair monetary system. The other thing that I really wanted to talk about is algorithms at heart of fight of content. So at the moment, and this is not the first time, it's not going to be the last time, but you have big tech in front of Congress being grilled uh, about the addictive nature of their products and also about how easily hate and disinformation and misinformation can spread. At a House hearing on Thursday about the spread of misinformation with the chief executives of Facebook, Twitter, and Google, some lawmakers are expected to focus on how the company's algorithms are written to generate revenue by surfacing posts that users are inclined to click on and respond to. Some will argue that the law that protects the social networks from liability needs to be changed. Well, they've been arguing this for a little while and we've already seen and been seeing what happens when these big cup tech companies begin to, you know, censor the information that's on their channels. Is this a lead up to even more censorship? And you know, it is a fine line and this is really, really hard because I don't like, you know, hate speech and all of that. And there are a lot of things on the internet having to do with children and trafficking and all of the, that's really bad stuff. It should not be there. The dark web should not exist. But you also need to have a space where you can get true information. And that is becoming more and more and more narrow. And it's really worrisome to me. So we'll just pay attention and we'll keep putting the truth out there and help you understand it as much as I can. Now, let's see. So, oh, Stimmies. This should have probably gone before that one. But stimmies pay for stock plays fueling market. All right. So what they're talking about is the stimulus checks. That's part of what they're counting on. We saw that with, uh, you know, we saw that earlier with Robin Hood, et cetera. That has not really changed. But here's a great little example of it. Uh, Abraham Sanchez knew exactly how he wanted to spend his stimulus check. Like millions of Americans, he had begun dabbling in the stock market during the pandemic. So soon after 1400 from the federal government landed in his bank account last week, Mr. Sanchez, a 28-year-old trumpet player in Sacramento, moved all but $200 of it into his Robinhood online trading account. He then used most of it 
to buy 80 shares of AMC Entertainment, the struggling movie theater chain. I was like, you know what? Whatever. I'll give it a shot. Now look. Something that always happens before a major market correction, and we aren't talking about 10 or 20%, we're talking about 1929, 2008, 1999, is that the naive public gets involved. So while I would absolutely 100% like everybody to be educated in, in what money is, what its function is, and know how to really utilize it. What I think is really happening here is the naive population getting involved in it and their wealth going voop. But the stimulus checks are, when you start hearing how great this economy is growing, you gotta realize that it is happening on the back of massive debt. And at some point, that debt must get repaid. You either have to, you know, pay it or roll it over or default on it. That's what hyperinflation is about for governments and central banks. It's hyperinflating the value away. The only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that inflation. That's what you have to pay attention to. That's why you have to have gold and silver. And by the way, I did want to bring this up and I'm I'm going to do a piece um, on how, how gold and silver perform during hyperinflation and during currency resets on um, next week. I'm not sure exactly of my schedule, but I'm thinking maybe Tuesday, but it will definitely be next week. A lot of you heard that Lynette's like silver, so sell your gold and buy your silver. No, 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 no. That is not what I have said. And I will show you this more particularly. My strategy is based on historic data. And so initially you will see that gold silver ratio decline, which is what we've been seeing. But as we go through the hyperinflation and and that it'll continue to narrow for a while until we get up to the real reset. And then remember, governments reset currencies against gold, not against silver, not against Bitcoin, not against stocks, not against anything else, but against gold. So do not you do not get rid of your gold position. That's insanity in my opinion. I am not getting rid of my gold position. I add to it. I have a certain level of silver to maintain my standard of living as we go through this, but it is not as big as my gold position, nor will it ever be, because gold is the primary currency metal. Silver is the secondary currency metal. When they do a reset, they reset it against gold. And it is a whole lot easier to execute the pa- to execute the strategy when you can hold your wealth in a tiny package. And gold, you can hold a lot more wealth in the same amount of gold than you can in the same amount of silver. So I just really wanted to clarify that. Please listen to me on this. I like them both. I own them both. My position in gold is far larger than my position in silver. But I do own them both, and I think everybody needs to own both of them. If you want to know more about the strategy, then you can talk to our consultants because they understand this and they will help you determine how much silver do I need, how much gold do I need. I don't care what either one of them do in terms of this fiat funny money that's going away and being hyperinflated. That's not relevant to me. What is relevant to me is how I'm going to utilize them through this trend cycle. And that's what I think needs to be relevant to you as well. Because the only time you're going to want to convert them into that fiat money is when you need to pay off some fixed rate debt or you need to convert it into income producing assets that you can only do with that fiat. You'll be able to utilize both of them. More about that next week. And then... uh, 
finally, but here, good, trading app Robinhood files for IPO. Well, they should. They're high flying. This is a great time to be getting into the stock market. Why not? But a year after, so we, we've got to pay attention to this next one because it goes to what we were just talking about. Whether or not this is the final route, I don't know. But a year after route, meaning last March, long stock market shifts. So what we're looking at here is how is it shifting because it was the big tech that was really leading the pack. Now that is shifting, but the whole system is shifting. So we'll pay attention. I'll keep you informed. And um, that's it for today. But I have to tell you, I had so much fun this morning at the MM Steel. Can I have the information? Thank you. All of it. Thank you. At MM Steel Club's online conference, Steel Metals and Mining Week. Uh, I was on with some really interesting speakers, including Chris Marcus over at Arcadia Economics, Spencer Campbell, who is the director of SE Asia Consulting PE Limited in Singapore, and Maria Krasnikova, who's the chief industry risk officer for metals and mining over at Surbank in Russia. And the interview is available on their website, but um, I really enjoyed it a lot and I hope that we do it again. You might have noticed, and if you haven't, go and take a look at the Coffee with Lynette that I did with Miles Wakeham. It was in the office, so starting to get back to a more normal lifestyle, and it was so much fun. It was so enjoyable. I'm going to have to have him and his wife uh, to the farm. We'll do, we'll do that again in person, but maybe next time we'll do it at the farm. And uh, also, if you haven't seen it yet, the link is in the description to the Stansberry Research uh, interview that I did with Daniela. And I just had a very enjoyable time with her. She is she's phenomenal, as well as the Meet Kevin, which has been, and all of those links are, are below and also on our blog. So next week, I've got actually two new people that are interviewing me. So this is, I'm having a blast. I have to tell you the truth. I'm having so much fun with all of this um, because it's interesting. I don't know what anybody's going to ask me. So next week on Tuesday, I'm going to be on with Neil McCoy Ward. And then on Thursday, I'm going to be on with Mark Moss. I don't know when either one of those interviews will run, but if you just stay tuned to our socials, we will, we will keep you abreast of when we're doing it. And also an announcement on something that I've personally been wanting for years. And so I'm so excited to so much good news today, even with all this crappy bad news. But I am so happy to tell you that we listened to your advice and are now available on your favorite podcast platform. So you can listen to us without interruption anywhere, anytime. And we would really appreciate your feedback on, you know, what, how we can make that better and what we always, always, how can we make everything better for you? So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you share. Make sure that you share all of this information. You'll find these links on our, on our blog, okay? And leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. I do read the comments. I appreciate it. We all read the comments. Um, Eric certainly and, and Ryan, everybody does. And um, until next time, and you know, I mean, really... With all of this inflation, it's going to get more and more noticeable because it's not something in the future. It's something we've been living with our entire lives. The difference is, is that it is speeding up now. It is becoming more visible now. It is ushering in the hyperinflation, even though the monetary velocity chart um, has shown that, you know, that little blip up that we got down but I think we're going to see it start to go up in a pervasive way here. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. That'll let us know that the hyperinflation has begun. 
Um, I, I do think we're in the last melt-up phase. I do think that we are entering that hyperinflationary phase. Get your gold. Get your silver. Cover your assets. Here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. It's based upon the strategy that I developed in started to develop in 1987 when I began my studies of currencies, repeatable patterns, get it done. And until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.